So here I am on Route 9 in South Glens Falls, New York. Now many of you have probably just driven by here if you've ever gone up to the Adirondacks 50 years ago, but now you probably go on the North Way and you go right past this area. But I'm standing in a church parking lot. Now it doesn't look like a church parking lot. There's a, a closed restaurant behind us, but back in the day, this space was a church. You see, years ago in the uh, early uh, 90s, uh, a new group of people got together and they wanted to worship God together. They wanted to start a church together. And so they gathered in this restaurant week after week. They pushed the bar out of the way and, and put their Sunday school in there. And then they gathered for worship with the chairs they set up. They, wo they welcomed people, invited them to come to church in this very restaurant that now is actually closed. But the church changed over the years and eventually that grew into St. Andrew Lutheran Church in South Glens Falls, New York. A few years after they gathered at the restaurant and were able to save and, and get some help from the National Church, they were able to purchase their first building. This was St. Timothy's Episcopal Church that closed, but instead they purchased it through the Lutheran Church and started up there and fit a whole 100 chairs into this very small sanctuary space. They grew over the next few years, but at some point something happened and they had forgotten to hear that lesson that we read today. Sometimes when churches uh, buy a building, their first building or have a building, they focus a lot on the things inside. They focus on making sure the windows are good or the paint is good or everything sort of becomes internal. But yet this gospel lesson today that Jesus invites us into is not all at all about being internal. It's about going out. So how do I know that a church like St. Andrew slipped up and turned from being focused on things outside of themselves to things internally. Well, I know that because I was the pastor there. Uh, years ago, it was the first church I was ever at. And sometimes when we're part of church, we get so excited about what's happening internally. We get so excited about uh, some next step, some, something that makes us more real. Uh, I will tell you that there's not a pastor that I know that doesn't ask and question, hey, how many people were in worship attendance on the weekend? Because sometimes that's how we measure if we're successful. But the reality is the measurement tools that Jesus gives us are very, very different. What he outlines for these disciples is to go and try and communicate to everyone that you could possibly go to that they're loved. It's pretty simple. In fact, he doesn't want them getting loaded down and packing their fears and packing extra stuff. He says, trust them, because here's the thing. The people that really will be there for you will be there for you. And they'll take care of you. And you as disciples don't need to worry about that. I want you to be just focused on your experience with them. I want you to be focused on telling them about God's love and grace for them. And some powerful things happen. The disciples come back and you see there were some numbers skipped. We read Luke 10, 1 through 11, and then we skip a little bit and it's 16 to 20. Well, in between those five verses, it talks about the disciples going out. And when they come back, the 70 returned with joy. And they say, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. Now think about where we are in our culture right now. Think about what we've seen over the past few weeks and months. Think about the challenges that this country is going through with, with things with gun violence and, and trying to wrestle with our own racism. Think about the challenges that we're dealing with with people who are dealing with mental illness and mental health stuff going on. When the disciples went out and proclaimed to people that God loved them, they saw demons fall. Now you and I, we've all got demons, every one of us. You can call it what you want. You know, different psychological backgrounds will call it something, churches will call it something. The reality is what Jesus called it was evil. And when the disciples went out and started to preach love into the world, so much so that when there wasn't, you know, somebody wasn't ready for it, they just wipe off the dust of their sandals and moved on. Because 
the Holy Spirit was preparing the people that need to hear it to be ready to hear it. And there are people, you know them, they're in your life, they're in my life. There are people that are not ready to hear that love. It doesn't mean that they're not loved. Be very clear about that. We've got more folks that you know and I know that don't want anything to do with church. They want to be a part of it. They don't believe in God. Well, guess what? Just wipe off the dust and move on. Work with the people that you can work with. God will handle the rest. Remember what Romans says, that there is nothing that can separate anyone at any point in time from my love for them in Christ Jesus. Let God handle that. Our job is to hit the road. Our job is to not pack our fears, but to go out and just continue to share God's love and grace. The church behind you is Diamond Point Community Church. This is the place that I come to in the summer and I preach a couple times during the summer and it's a place my family comes to recharge. But it's a reminder to me that this place is opening up every summer so that people who are you know, just driving by, people that are coming camping, people that are here for a week during the summer at Lake George, they can have a place to stop and recognize God's love. We need to go out like this. We need to go out in the way that God has blessed you with. There's a great passage. I love this line in Galatians that we read a little bit earlier during church. Uh, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. Well, guess what? The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The laborers are us, all of us. And we have good news to sow into the world as our churches, as our families, for those of you who are watching on on TV or maybe you're at St. Paul's or Amherst or some other church around this place, you and I have front porches to walk off of and to go into this world this summer and to share God's love and grace because this world needs it and God has invited us to bring it. So my prayer for you this summer As we go through this incredible Independence Day weekend, my prayer for you this summer is that you will walk down that road. You will drive down that road. You will go to the people that need to hear it because God is already preparing a future for you with them. That you will share God's love and grace in whatever way you can. And if it doesn't work, don't stress over it. Move on to the next place. And I bet by the end of the summer, You and I will be able to return here or to another church or to a front porch and be able to say, listen, we watched the demons fall. And Jesus will say, yeah, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on all of this. God has given us the authority of grace and love and hope. May we as the church live into it and share it. Thanks be to God.